Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We're on the road. We're in The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN NFV World Congress 2017. And I'm here with two guests, two interviewees just now. Um, first of all, on my left, Steve Teitzel, who is Global Solutions Executive for Network and OSS Transformation and Security at IBM. Steve, we've met before, but not for a long time, so good to see good you to again. To you. Yes. We're both still here, at least, which is something. Absolutely. And next yes. to you is Anil Rao who is Principal Analyst at Analysis Mason. And welcome. Good to see you again, Martin. Let's get into it. Um, it's five years since Etsy started defining NFV. The white paper was five years ago this month. Um, and we're here at this World Congress celebrating that now we are five moment, uh, but also reflecting on the progress that's been made in the technology over that five years. Anil, let's start with you. What are you hearing from operators on what's influencing adoption of NFV and cloud-based networking as a whole? Yeah, um, I think um, you're right. So, so the first five years um, is mainly sort of focused on the in approving the technology to start with, right? Uh, so NFV was 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 a brand new technology, even though it, it's been in different forms applied elsewhere uh, in, in other industries. But as, as a virtualization technology, uh, it was new to, in the context of networks, right? Uh, it's, it was new to the telecoms industry. So, so the first few years was really around, you know, getting our arms around, you know, what does this mean as a technology? What does it to do to the infrastructure, right? So a lot of the focus was on trying to understand those complexities at the infrastructure layer. Uh, and slowly now, as we are reaching the five-year mark uh, and, and going into the next five years, I think the focus is, is shifting slowly in how do you operationalize these NFE, STN, you know, the, the VNFs, right? Um, so what does it mean? That means how do you get these VNFs um, uh, onboarded? Uh, how do you build services? How do you, how do you stitch these VNFs to, to develop services? How do you offer them to the customers? So slowly the, the, the focus is, is increasing on how do you operationalize NFE and SDN. There's always something new coming up at these, these events and SDN and NFE, even though they've been around for a while, something always follows on from them and new buzzwords emerge. What we're hearing a lot of at the moment is zero touch and automation, of course, automation, automation, automation all the time. They're both key topics here at the Congress. Steve, what do they mean to operators from an IBM perspective? I think it's interesting, you know, as I listen to the zero touch conversation, it brings to, to mind the image of, a, you know, the, the fighter jet and the pilot and then the cockpit, right? And all the systems that are in a modern day fighter jet environment, you know, they cannot control all those pieces, right? And so they have to depend upon the machine to be able to do that, right? In many ways, that's what we're talking about with zero touch automation. The pilot can't touch all those systems. The, the network operators can't touch all those systems anymore, right? Then they have to begin to shift to that world of being able to, quote, fly by wire in that environment, really enable that operational world that, that you know, we're looking to get into now as we've kind of gone beyond the, the science projects of getting things virtualized and moving into making this real in the operator's network. So that's, that's, that's what I'm seeing as, as zero touch. Uh, you know, management that goes on in this space. The world of automation becomes a little bit more interesting conversation. Automation really is not just about how do I do things and then write out an if-then script, really. It's really about how do I begin to go beyond just simple automation to really getting the machine to think for me in that world of automation. So that's, that's what we're beginning to see in this world as we talk about zero touch management and the world of automation. This is a question to you both, gentlemen, if you would. Um, often operators want to have a clear control of production network versus automation. How ready do you think operators are to allow AI-enabled automation in their networks to really enable overall automation, if you see what I mean? And let's start with you. Uh, what do you make of that? I think it is inevitable that we have to reach a stage where autonomous operations uh, has to be considered seriously and has to be realized. Because in every industry there comes a stage where um, that you have to do something different and an inflection point, so to speak. 
And I think we are nearing that inflection point in our industry because, you know, as I think we all understand now with, you know, five years down the line that when we have NFV in the network, you know, the virtual network functions and we have these dynamic services that you are creating uh, in a real-time basis based on customer demand, there is, it's not going to be humanly possible to, to track those uh, the way the network's changing itself to suit those uh, service demands dynamically. So it is a living and breathing network in the sense that it is, it's changing its shape and configuration based on service demands. So in this type of scenario to expect uh, uh, a human or an army of people to keep track of what's going on and, and, to, and to take remediation action based on those changes is, is going to be near to impossible, I think, in, in the sort of vision that we are painting in the, in the industry, right? So in, in this sort of future, I think, we, we have to start thinking differently. Um, talking about inflection point, I think, I think we are nearing to that point where we have to start thinking about um, uh, an automated operations, uh, and, and it needs, absolutely, it needs a mindset shift in the way that we do things today and, and we, where, where we want to be in this automated operations uh, context. And, and I think we're entering into that. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not bursting into it, right, with full-blown you know, automation, but we're beginning to enter into that. And I think as, as operators begin to get comfortable with that, right, uh, they begin to release more to that world of uh, AI or what we're calling cognitive <laughs> operations. And we're seeing that, that clients are actually kind of excited about that because they realize that this world of moving functions to the cloud is one thing, but really moving them to cloud native where they become microservices, it's complex enough going to just cloud enabled, let alone cloud native, and the cloud native piece, as that comes along, is going to increase that complexity even more. They can't scale the resources they have, so they got to figure out how do they, how do they help the resources that they have scale without scaling the number of resources. And what we're seeing is the same things that we're doing in the world of of, of health where we're helping doctors assemble all the information around you know, cancer research and different pieces like that, helping the network operator assemble all the structured and unstructured data about their network and be able to augment their intelligence more to be able to operate that environment is just the beginning of the discussion. We can also now begin to get the, the, the machine to begin to help us think through and begin to identify the patterns that you know, before we, we couldn't have enough humans to be able to identify the patterns of what's going to happen and begin to predict operations in this world of complexity. In addition to that, in that discussion about automation and life cycle management, where we begin to take a look at the life overall of these uh, services that we're putting into play, what we're seeing is that the machine can begin to assemble the path to get from where we are to where we need to be in the life of that VNF. If all of a sudden I realize I'm in a state that I don't want to be in and I, my intended state is someplace else, the machine can begin to assemble the pieces, much like a satellite navigation sim system assembles the, the map system for you to go from point A to point B. And, and when you do that, it, it's doing it based upon the traffic at that time of day, the construction that time of week. The same thing's going to occur in the network. The machine will begin to assemble the path, the, the transitions, the steps that need to occur in order to be able to operate in that environment. But there's a learning process on both sides about how do, we, how do we enable, how do we trust the system so that it, we can begin to fly by wire in the network environment? Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to add to what, what Stephen is saying and, and sort of um, take a step back and, and, and sort of pe you know, be more realistic in, in this whole aspect. So, so everything that we are saying about automated operations and, um, and, and the AI ops stuff is, is the ultimate goal. And, and it's a journey. Uh, and we need to find a way to to develop trust in more and more of the automation that we want to do even today. And and it is a journey. So as you do start from scratch, right? So as you do more and more of the uh, simple automations, you start to gain trust in in the machine, to, to use your term. And then you sort of you know incrementally uh, enhance your automations you know bring in machine learning and, and then uh, ultimately AI as well so so I think it's a journey uh, and we want to get there and, and and we want to take as much as possible uh, today and, and and move forward it's, it's, it's as much a culture journey yeah. as it is a 
technology, technology that yeah. we're in the middle of, yeah. right? And Absolutely. so there's a, there's a process of trust that has to be yeah. built yep. yeah. in the machine and that its ability to be able to do this. And we're beginning to see that and see excitement grow around what that can really drive in yeah. the network environment. It's a big step to, ha to ask human humanity and humans yeah. to give absolute yeah. trust to a machine. And the machine has to prove itself in so many ways mm. that it's that it's it's capable of doing what's required without being well, by, by being benign and not being threatening. And yet we all did that in order to get here for yeah. so this conference. We all had to trust in that machine, we that, that airplane to get here, right? Yeah. So you know, we we do it. We do it. We yeah. just have to become used to it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Really, we're, we're almost out of time. It's really fascinating, interesting stuff. This, and my point is that it's important, and people will want to learn more about it. So, where can they find out more about what we've been talking about? Yeah, we, we've got some great papers on the world of cognitive operations that they can they can come to our, our site at IBM and, and take a look at that and get some information on how to begin to enable the world of cognitive operations. In addition, we've also done a paper on this world of life cycle management, mm -hmm. what it means and how to begin to automate that world and really drive that world as well. So go to the site. Go, go to the <laughs> IBM site, ibm.com, and take a look there, and we'll provide you the URL. That's what you've got to do. Go to the IBM site and learn more about, about this. It's absolutely fascinating stuff. Gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks, Martin.